I was getting ready to make something that needs to be absolutely square on my big CNC. And I'm using a dial indicator to square the X axis to the Y axis. But then that got me thinking about how square is the square that I'm using. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you figure that out. There are a couple of things that you need for this, but these are things that you should have anyway, like a fairly accurate straight edge. The big one that I have here is very precise. And you might have seen this in previous videos, but I've used this aluminum extrusion as a straight edge as well. So I've laid a big piece of plywood on my workbench and I'm gonna clamp this extrusion to the edge using my brand new clamps that I made in a recent video. And I'm gonna check it with the real straight edge to make sure that it is actually straight. I 3D printed a holder for the digital indicator that I have and it holds it at the correct angle on that precision straight edge. And I can slide it across and make sure that the straight edge that I already clamped down is parallel. And this is just a more precise check for straightness. With that done, I can take the square that I want to fix and put it up against that straight edge. And I want to make sure that it's meeting that straight edge perfectly, as in no gap. And I don't have any feeler gauges, but the aluminum from a pop can is about 0.1 millimeters or around three thousandths of an inch thick. And that's precision that I can live with for this kind of a tool. At the end, it doesn't go in, but in the middle here it does. So that means that the edge is not exactly straight. And I took it up and I could see that there's a bit of a burr right here. And I'm going to knock that down with a file and I'm just going to go over the edge. When you buy these new, they're fairly square. At least they're square enough for framing. This is a framing square after all, but they are not a high precision tool. You can look at the edge and you can see that it's very rough because these things are actually punched out. They're not machined. So after I had that edge cleaned up a little bit, I still had some gaps there and I want to make sure that this is sitting tight all the way across. I want this edge to be perfectly reliable. So I'm marking it in places where it's away and I'm going to concentrate on the areas where it's still touching. And when I put it up against the precision straight edge, I can see that it is close enough. I can't fit that feeler gauge in anymore. So next I need to take that freshly reworked edge and put it up against the straight edge I have clamped in place. And I'm going to clamp the square down tight against the straight edge and mark the location right at the corner there because I want to determine next how square the square is. And the way I'm going to do that is to use that other straight edge to extend the blade of the square out twice as long as it actually is. That'll increase the accuracy that I can get here with this setup. So I'll make a mark and then I'll flip the square over so it's going the other way and line it up with that mark that I made at the corner and clamp it down once more. And once again, use the straight edge up against the blade and make another mark up at the end. And I can see here that this square is very close to being perfectly square. There's very little space between those two lines, but I'm going to try to improve it. So to do that, I'm going to take the square out and I'm going to work that edge nice and flat with it clamped in my side vise on my workbench. So I'm going to put it back in place again, up against that line and clamp it down again and set the straight edge in place again. But this time I'm going to use my feeler gauge to make sure that there's no gaps on this side. And the whole objective here is to get a square that is not only square, but the edges need to be absolutely straight as well. And this is the only way to do it. You might be saying that there's an easier way to make a square a square, and that's to use a punch in the corner. And you can look at these squares, both of the ones that I'm going to show here, and you'll see that I've already done that. I did that years ago when I first bought the squares, and that got them very close. But the way to get them perfect, or as close to perfect as you possibly can, is to use the method that I'm showing here. So I've got it clamped in the vise again. I'm working on those areas that were high to try to not only make the surface flat, but also try to split those two lines up at the end. And I had to do this over and over again several times to make sure that the gap was taken care of and also the squareness of the square was staying within reason. So you might be saying, well, that takes care of the outside, John. What about the inside? The inside has to be square as well, right? 
Yes, it does. And the way to check that is to have something else, and that is a second framing square. So I'm going to go through the whole process again, without showing all the parts, that is, of squaring my steel square, the one that I have in my workshop. So once again, I've got to put up against the straight edge, trying to figure out where the spots are that I need to work it. And I'm going to get that edge taken care of to begin with, make it absolutely straight so that I can't get the feeler gauge in anymore. And then I can check it for square. I had to do this over and over again. As you can well imagine, steel is a lot harder than aluminum, so it took a lot more work. But I eventually got there, and at the point where I couldn't get the feeler gauge in anymore, I also checked the blade with the other straight edge to try to make that as straight as possible as well. And at the same time, I was watching how square it was with those marks that I already have up there. And you can see that it is bang on. And when I have both edges on the steel square done, I can take that and slip it inside the other square to check that. And the only issue that I found was, was a little bit wider, this narrow part, I think it's called the tongue, and the other longer part, wider part, is the blade. That was a little bit more, and I used my calipers to measure that. And I worked on an inside corner until I got the same reading all the way across. And I did the same thing with the blade. And the way to do this is to take your time and uh, avoid using power tools unless it's really extreme. I was able to get all this done with a file. The inside edge of the blade only needed to be flattened, as in it was already square to the other square. There wasn't any gap showing up after I did that work on that inside corner. And now I have two very precise squares that have very straight edges.